Hello, everybody, and welcome to this war of mine. I've had my eye on this game uh, for quite a while. I remember when it was first announced and the first launch trailer uh, for it uh, was presented. It's a war game unlike any other that's ever been made. Um, we are not a combatant. We are not a soldier. We are civilians in a city that is embattled in a city where there is a government force and a rebel force fighting each other and our only goal is to survive. Um, it gives the game a very post-apocalyptic feel as you can see I've, I've played around a bit already. Um, a post-apocalyptic feel but one that really when you start to think about it it's going on in the world today. Uh, it's one of those moments and one of those sort of raw realities where, you know, vi video games, video games are an art and they certainly can be uh, an art. And anyways, <laughs> this is, this is a great game. It's a point and click. Uh, you have to make moral decisions. You're forced into making moral decisions and I hope you guys enjoy it. So without further ado. Let's get this thing underway. Day one. So let's see who we start off with. I've, I've gone through a couple of playthroughs and both times we started off with uh, slightly different people and the locations around your house also appear to change. What doesn't change uh, is the setup of your starting house. Uh, the starting building, this is our home, uh, does not change. Um, there, uh, There's things that remain here uh, that we can loot and that we're going to loot. But let's see who we get. Ah, uh, okay. How long has this siege lasted? It's hard to say with every day, when every day is a struggle for survival. The city is crawling with snipers. Shelling is ordinary business almost every night. Phones don't work. There is a shortage of food and meds, and many people are left homeless. Bruno and Marco have always been good friends, so when the war broke out, they decided to stick together. They met Pavel while scavenging for supplies. He used to be Porgorin's star football player. Now he's just another homeless victim of war, so they teamed up, hoping for the best. So yeah, we've got Bruno here, who's a good cook. I believe Marco is a good scavenger, and Pavel is a fast runner. It seems to be either these three, and then one other girl, uh, Katia, um, who you can start with. And Katia is a good barter uh, for trades. So right off the bat, we have all these things in our main house that we need to uh, search through. And so we're going to get them. We're going to get our guys going and searching because um, we're going to need to loot. So we've got lots of components. We've got lots of wood and some electric parts. One of our first uh, goals today is going to be uh, to get a shovel up and running, to get a bed up and running. Um, and of course we need to at least try to fully loot um, our home base here. So we've got a little bit of herbs, a little bit of clean water. It's always good. Uh, we can get you to start prying off that board on the door there. Uh, you've got uh, a thing blocking your way. That's fine. So we've got a little bit of raw food. Lots of lots of good stuff in that one. We can probably get you down there making the metal workshop then. Now you can reach that. You can probably just start on that anyways. Uh, okay, we got parts and clean water, which is good. Get you to start on that as well, I think. Doesn't look like we have too much accessible without clearing rubble anyways right now. Oh, other than those two, actually. Uh, so we should probably do that. Get you to make the metal workshop, though. It's taking long without a shovel, I agree. Go go right there. Run run to there. We'll leave you to, to, <laughs> to continue picking away at that, however. So he's building a metal workshop in it. We're going to be able to build crowbars and shovels. Uh, we actually have a lockpick now, but we're going to save that for when we need to sneak. Um, you're also going to search that. So yeah, 
obviously right at the beginning, um, the first day is all about clearing uh, your, you know, your your domicile. It's all about it's all about uh, basically basically scavenging what there is left to scavenge um, in your house, uh, and then from there on, what happens is in the day. We will have things like rain collectors, and we'll have to cook, and we'll have to do this, and we'll have to do that. And uh, basically, at night, um, at night you can, well, we'll see, but at night you can, uh, which did I make now? I think I made the shovel. Let me, let me check. Uh, yes, I made the shovel, so we're going to want the crowbar. Um, and we can get you to restart now, because you're going to have a shovel. Uh, you're already at the end, so it doesn't really matter. But yes, at night, um, you have to get your guys, uh, some, some will, uh, why did you stop? I guess you stopped making the crowbar, that's interesting. Um, so we'll get you just to stand over there and wait for the crowbar to be done. Um, at night, uh, one of your guys can sleep, one of your guys should guard, um, and then another one can head out and scavenge. And heading out and scavenge, scavenging can yield to all sorts of different discoveries. Um, you can find people to barter with. Uh, you can do all sorts of things. But of course, there's also people um, that are less than uh, nice, less than friendly. <laughs> and uh, those people um, may try to shoot you and take your stuff. Uh, which is pretty nerve-wracking because it's an automatic thing here. It's uh, automatic. There's there's no there's no saving, quitting, and and trying again. Once it happens, it's happened. Um, so it can be pretty nerve-wracking. And in one of my play playthroughs, um, we should probably check on. Okay, so Bruno's slightly wounded and Marco's slightly sick, so we need to keep that in mind. What are you doing? Oh, didn't mean to do that. There we go. Uh, get you to open that. Suppose we'll get you to work on uh, work on that with a shovel next. I don't think you can both use the shovel at the same time. If you can, that's an error. Yeah, no, you can't. So we'll we'll just wait for Bruno to be done with the shovel because obviously the shovel will make that go a lot quicker. Okay, now you can get on those boards and you can get that off. And then Bruno is going to be through first. So you can use the crowbar on that. Thor's boarded up, for Christ's sake. I hit it too <laughs> too soon. All right, that's why. Uh, all right, and we'll get you over there on that. Nope, can't. Okay. Got to wait for Bruno to be done. The crowbar does miraculously um, leap between the two of them <laughs> uh, in a matter of seconds. They just can't be using it simultaneously it appears sometimes what happens during the day is uh you get you, you see, we seem to get uh visitors and, and most of the time they're bartering there are other events and things like that uh, that we will see of course okay we got a bandage for somebody whoever whoever is injured it's either bruno or marco we've got some more herbs we've only got two pieces of raw food which isn't the greatest Let's get you running up to that. I think we're we're almost done. Uh, we're going to want to build a bed. Yeah, I don't know. The The day ends at 8, so I don't think we're going to get through this uh, before before we get to things. And we're going to really, we're going to have to wait. We don't even have enough stuff to make the bed. But really, we're going to have to wait um, until the next day to get these guys treated they're only slightly sick and slightly wounded anyways but uh yeah so unfortunately i still haven't managed to, <laughs> to get through i still have not yet uh, managed to uh fully scavenge my my domicile uh so we're gonna get you to sleep of course you can't sleep in the bed right now so you're not gonna be um too happy the only thing that i don't like is that we can't send two people to scavenge. Um, so we're going to send Marco because he's got the most backpack space. 
we do have Pavel here, uh, who we're going to leave to guard while Bruno sleeps. Um, okay, so we've got an abandoned cottage. A family barricaded themselves in this house, but despite their efforts, looters got inside. It's been abandoned ever since. Still, we might find some useful things that the looters overlooked or left behind. There seems to be lots of food, huge amounts of materials, some meds, huge amounts of weapons. That's very important. And lots of parts. The ruined villa. They say some people still live there against all odds. They must have some supplies stocked, like canned food and possibly bandages or medicines, but they don't want the trade. If we're desperate, we could try to steal from them. That's interesting. But there's no caution or danger, which means that they don't really defend themselves. They don't look like they have any uh, weapons to defend themselves. And then we've got a quiet house. It's in a housing estate that remains almost untouched. It's a calm area of little houses with porches and gardens. Most of those houses are still inhabited. People are trying to lead normal lives there. We've got nothing to look for there, unless we're willing to steal. Um, yeah, it's it's very interesting. So we've got the quiet house and we've got the ruined villa, which are both the only good stuff that's going to be there is if we steal. Uh, and then we've got the abandoned cottage, which we're not going to be hurting anybody. So let's do that. We'll try to remain, um, you know, good people <laughs> as long as we can. Um, but again, once we get desperate... So we're back. Uh, <laughs> the game has this thing where whenever it tries to load a new area, um, it craps out. And so I need to remember to stop my recording um, before we load a new area. So we only got a slightly different beginning. I actually managed to loot the entire area um, and had time to... Pavel is now sick, the guy that's sick, and he's on meds. Uh, Bruno's perfectly healthy, and Marco is slightly injured, but he was able to put on the bandage. Um, so we're going to send the slightly injured Bruno scavenging. Uh, we're going to get the slightly sick Pavel to sleep and the uh, healthy uh, Bruno to guard. I'm not too worried about sending Marco to scavenge um, simply because, uh, you know, um, the abandoned cottage is going to be, well, abandoned. They, they tend not to throw um, anything crazy at you right at the beginning. So... I'm going to stop the recording, load the new area, and I'll see you there. And here we are. So, of course, uh, we brought with us uh, our shovel and our um, crowbar. So, already we're finding shell casings. We're finding all sorts of components and parts. We'll, we'll take those. Basically, I just like to take everything at the beginning uh, just in case. That's an indicator of noise, um, but it looks like it's going to be a rat. So... No, no real need to be too frightened. The music is always epic in the background. We're just going to take everything, and uh, when we find better, better stuff, um, we will go right ahead and just replace what we are carrying with it. So, different, different areas, of course, uh, you know, high risk, high reward. Um, they do give you a very decent place here at this abandoned cottage to basically get a get a starter get a starter um starter kit essentially uh because you, because you need it um you know our house only goes so far um in getting us underway the one thing our house doesn't have is weapon parts these guys right here um so we will be grabbing some of that um we have lots of wood we're actually we're missing components is what we're really missing um fertilizer is really good to stock up on too the books are good we we, we have we have some books though so i'm not too concerned about that the thing about night um i haven't tested it out but if you're still here when the clock ticks out, I don't think that's very good. Because I was sneaking in a uh, in a in a location um, one time, and my guy started to say, "He's like, uh, you know, the clock's clock's running out. I need to go. I need to go. You know." And there was people with guns guarding and things like that. So 
Um, it was pretty intense, so I had to get him to basically sprint, sprint for the exit uh, when that happened. Just wanted to debar the door so we don't have to worry too much. Oh, look at all of the food and all of the water. Okay, that's really good. Um, wood we will be able to get, and we've got plenty, uh, so we want all of this. Absolutely all of that. Uh, we don't need the shell casings right now. We will take the vegetables. Uh, we need the water. We definitely need the water. So get rid of you and we will take all 10 of the water because we don't have a rain catcher just yet. We should get a couple of rain catchers really if we want to be we want to be true. Um, get that. Okay. Now up here, there's a note, I believe, because I do recognize this location. Um, on the first day, they robbed us. Two days later, they murdered our girls. I shot every one of them, but I don't want to use the gun anymore. It's broken and buried in the backyard. The next part looks shaky. If you're reading this, don't look for me. Um, so I think that opens up a scavenging location here. Uh, because we just instinctually know where <laughs> he buried the gun. But there is a broken pistol. So when we upgrade our metalworking uh, factory, we'll, we'll, we will be able to repair the broken pistol with parts and things like that. Um, and uh, yeah, that's huge. Uh, huge for self-defense, obviously. Um, and also offense if you're looking to rob people in order to survive. Um, yeah, lots of lots of intense decisions <laughs> forthcoming. Uh, lots of intense decisions forthcoming. It's uh, gonna be pretty fun. I, I'm excited. I'm excited to see your reactions to uh, some of the choices we'll be forced to make eventually. Um, and you know these decisions, like I've obviously I've gotten pretty efficient in the early days because I have I have played, um, you know, a couple of times through. So there's some ammunition for a future gun. Uh, coffee is a really valuable trade resource. We definitely need to make room for the medicine. Uh, hmm, electric parts are valuable to trade. Not quite as valuable as you. Uh. God, we're, I, I really want to maintain the components and keep having the components, but like coffee, I guess one is, is one thing of coffee going to be more valuable in a trade than, than four parts? Probably, you know, probably four components. Probably. I don't know. I would have to, I would have to find out, I guess, but well, we're going to get the coffee beans cause we'll be able to trade that shit. But yeah, so we've got our little rat friend up here. Um, now he says, now you you get these symbols here. Uh, they're gonna really come into come into play and come into effect when we're sneaking through a house because there's a door that we can break down, but we can also peer through and see what's on the other side. And so you'll be able to peer through and see, you know, a guy walking or, or that type of thing. Um, very intense. And there's also there's also little hidden areas uh, they've where it looks like a guy peeking around a wall, and you'll click that, and your guy will, will vanish off in the <laughs> in the background. And they all kind of look the same. I would I would appreciate it if it was like you know there was a hidden symbol there, and you could hide under the bed type of thing. But um, it all just seems to be nooks in the wall. Uh, but that's okay. That's okay. We we won't judge the game too harshly for that. Uh, yeah, we've got some fertilizer. That's good. More coffee beans. Homegrown tobacco isn't that valuable. One weapon part. You know, weapon parts go a long way. Go a long way. So we'll see what else is in this room. Because if there is more weapon parts, then... Uh, oh, oh, medicine. Oh, all the good things in this house we're getting. Um... God, this makes it difficult. Um, I guess we get rid of you. 100% we get rid of you for that. A bandage is... Like you, can't, you can't even put into words how valuable that bandage is. Um, I guess we get rid of the lone weapon part. 
they, it's the pro the problem with scavenging this early in the game is like you need everything, and so it would be so great if I could send all my people or at least two of my people type of thing, but you just can't. So we fully scavenged the area. We didn't get any parts or wood or anything like that, um, but we know that there are a lot of parts in wood here, and we've gotten quite a bit of food. So we should be able to. Sorry, I had to rush and panic to, <laughs> to pause the recording while while this area loaded. But uh, as I was saying, we should be able to uh, go back and get parts and get things like that that we need. Um, basically, tomorrow night, uh, it was important for us to stock up on the valuables, and we really we really did stock up on the valuables. We're doing quite well. 